and welcome. I'm Eric Muskell with EMS Now, and welcome to this edition of EMS Now Up Close. Today, it's my pleasure to speak with Paul Salerno. He's the Global Portfolio Manager for SMT Assembly Solutions with McDermott Alpha. This is my first time interviewing Paul or anyone from McDermott Alpha. So, <laughs> Paul, welcome. Um, no pressure there, by the way. Uh, but maybe if you could give a quick introduction to yourself and McDermott Alpha for our audience. Sure, sure. Yeah. So th thanks for having us. Uh, first off, Eric, is, we appreciate that. And um, yeah, so, so McDermott Alpha uh, is a pretty, uh, pretty well known um, organization in the, the industry. Um, I am part of what we would consider the assembly solutions group. So your traditional alpha assembly solutions business. Um, we, we were, um, we joined together with the McDermott team in um, 2000, I want to say 2015, um, and became McDermott Alpha. And one of the, the, the most, I would say the distinct advantage that we have is, is our vertical integration throughout the um, electronics assembly world, meaning we have divisions that specialize in, in our, our circuitry group, which specializes in surface finishes, uh, and PCB design. Um, then we have our semiconductor group who specializes in, in uh, chemistries and, and solutions for the semiconductor space, uh, as well as, as our assembly group, which is uh, primarily um, uh, assembly solutions for uh, surface mount technology, such as solder pastes and cord wires and, and uh, wave solder sol solutions in non-SMT type uh, applications as well. Um, and so, you know, the advantage of being, being vertically integrated was we, we always have kind of, uh, an expert that we can speak to within, uh, within our, uh, business units to, uh, to help solve, solve problems for customers. So it's, it's pretty exciting time to be part of McDermott Alpha. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. That's good overview. Yeah. So, we're here today to talk about your next generation low temperature solder paste, the OM565HRL3. Um, so let's get into that. Can low temperature solder seem to be gaining more interest in the electronics industry? Is there any particular reason for the increased adoption of these types of solder? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the primary driver for low temperature solders is, is really to essentially reduce the peak reflow temperature below uh, your traditional um, SAC reflow temperatures of say 245 to 250 Celsius. Um, and and to, to reduce um, some of the defects that are incurred from the higher peak reflow temperatures, such as head and pillow or non-wet open defects where um, that are in part due to basically components warping during the reflow process. And, and so I, I would say for, for those who are not aware, so head and pillow defects are, are common in, in array packages and they're caused by typically by a lack of coalescence of the solder bump to the, to the PCB land or vice versa, the non-wet open defect is, is um, caused from a lack of wetting uh, to the PCB land and a fully coalesced uh, uh, solder deposition. So in, in both cases, sometimes you can mitigate that in the SAC reflow space through chemistry design. Um, but as the electronics industry is, particularly in the handheld space, is moving towards larger, thinner form factor packages with higher die to package ratio, um, there's becoming more and more of a challenge related to the components warping during higher peak reflow temperatures. Um, and so the, the drive towards low temperature solders is, um, is becoming more and more compelling as the technology, uh, uh, particularly in the, the metallurgical technology starts to uh, in, improve and enable um, some of these uh, uh, higher die to package ratio uh, packages to become more, more prevalent. And then you know, I, I'd also say a, maybe a secondary benefit to low temp temperature solders is, is, is that's gaining more and more interest is corporate sustainability initiatives around lowering energy costs um, and, of the assembly process. And so that's kind of a, a second on benefit of why low temperature solders are gaining more interest. Mm -hmm. 
That's interesting. So, so how do the alloying constituents different from traditional sac-based alloys? So I'd say most commonly, low temperature solders are comprised of, of tin bismuth based solders, uh, whereas your traditional lead free um, uh, solutions are tin silver copper alloying based. Uh, and and if, you, if you look at say the, the tin bismuth diagram, the phase diagram, for example, you kind of have your eutectic point of uh, around 58% bismuth. Um, but when we think of in terms of low temperature solders, really the usable range uh, of bismuth containing um, alloying constituents is somewhere between the 40 and 60% range, where if you go too low on the bismuth uh, content, your peak reflow temperatures start to approach that of, of SAC 305. And if you go too high, you, you, you can lead to kind of a more of a brittle uh, based alloy. Um, so finding the balance in, in the resulting material properties um, and, and still enabling a lower peak reflow temperature is really the, the goal of, of some of these new generation uh, tin bismuth base otters. That's interesting. So McDermott Alpha has recently launched its latest low temperature solder paste with the HRL free alloy. How do these next generation low temperature alloys differ from the traditional tin bismuth base solders? Yeah, that, that's a, a great question. Um, the, the HRL uh, three alloy is a tin bismuth base solder alloy, but the difference is we, we have micro alloying additions that are added to the alloy to kind of enhance the ductility of the alloy and improve its mechanical properties over your traditional low temperature solutions. So the, the combination of, of, of traditional metallurgical tools such as solid solution strengthening, grain refinement, for example, help us improve that ductility of the resulting alloy and in turn enhance the creep, creep properties of the solder joint which leads to um, improved drop shock or thermal cycling performance. And, and HRL3 is just, the, it's the next generation in low temperature alloy design as the we and the industry continues to work towards enhancing thermal, uh, thermal mechanical reliability and drop performance of tin bismuth based solders to achieve comparable results to that of SAC 305 while enabling these lower peak reflow temperatures like HRL3 down to about 175C to mitigate some of those warpage induced defects. Interesting. So now I've heard the term high reliability before. So, but what are the key attributes of a high reliability, low temperature solution such as the HRL3? Yeah, so I, I'd say Broadly speaking, um, I would characterize a, a high reliability alloy in the electronics assembly world as a soldering solution that en enhances or extends the usable life of a solder joint beyond what is capable of the baseline alloy. So for traditional SAC reflows, you would say SAC 305 would be the baseline alloy. For um, low temperature solders, you would say uh, the, the baseline alloy may may still be uh, SAC 305 where you're targeting to approach the reliability performance, but when you your, your real baseline is against tin bismuth base solders. So how are you improving the reliability of traditional tin bismuth base solders? Um, and it, as a general statement, so you know when you think about what a solder joint uh, exhibits during the uh, thermal excursion process, if you will, you've got a uh, high expansion PCB and a low expansion component. And the solder is really stuck in between that, um, uh, in between those two, two uh, uh, elements of the um, assembly process. And so um, with the solder, solder stuck in between the PCB and the component, it, it faces an inherent strain that's generated from the coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch between the two um, uh, the, the, the um, PCB and the component. So a good high reliability alloy such as HRL3 is more resistant to that cyclical fatigue when compared to traditional low temperature solutions. And, uh, and you know, the same could be said for in the SAC space when you look at high reliability solder alloys such as the Inalot alloy which 
further extends and just basically explains that the, the alloy is more comfortable working in a higher strain environment. Okay, that makes sense. So do alloy needs differ based on the end applications target market? Yeah, I, I, absolutely, yeah. So, um, you know, many, many people assume that high reliability just translates to exposure to a high temperature environment. And that's really not the case for uh, um, the, the low temperature space. It's absolutely true for your traditional high rail markets such as automotive where the inalot alloy has seen success uh, because of its ability to, to withstand continual operating temperatures above 120 C. In the low temperature space, such as the HRL3 alloy, you can classify it as a high reliability alloy um, in, in, the, in, in, in uh, markets such as the computing and handheld space where operating temperatures consistently run below 100 C. So high reliability, low temperature alloys essentially enable and enhance the reliability of your traditional alloy against that baseline. Um, and and in, in the case of HRL3, it's all about mitigating those warpage induced defects, lowering the peak reflow temperature and enhancing the mechanical and drop performance of the, uh, of the alloy compared to your traditional um, low temperature solutions. Okay. So that, now that's interesting on the HRL3 alloy, but how about the PACE chemistry? What can you tell us about the, the OM565 chemistry? Yeah, Erica, so yeah, we're, 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 we're really excited about the uh, potential for this chemistry. So designing chemistries to target uh, specific reflow temperatures of a new alloy is really challenging. Um, first, uh, you need to obviously consider the end, end user's application. So HRL3, for example, being designed to enable more complex designs um, and, and, and factor in fact, uh, factors such as component size, uh, where you have increasing pitch um, uh, and the, the, the gap between the, the IOs is certainly decreasing to enable more functionality of the end device, uh, that creates challenges from an electrochemical standpoint, where you have a smaller gap, a covered component, um, and, and so you, you have a low temperature reflow process, you really create an environment that is favorable to electromigration. And so the OM565 chemistry is designed to really perform well under challenging conditions, such as low standoff packages, as well as enable um, contact rework applications. Mm -hmm. This combined with the ability to uh, be compatible with type five um, powders, uh, type four and type five powders really enables the finer feature printing, which is what the need of the next generation user is in, in the computing and electronic space. Hmm. Now you touched on electrochemical reliability and, and ability to accommodate contact rework applications. What can you tell us about some of the challenges in achieving high electrochemical reliability for a low temperature solder? Yeah, so I'd say one of the, the biggest challenges with low temperature solder is in fact the, the lower peak reflow temperature, right? So the, the, the one size fits all kind of chemistry design typical of SAC um, reflow alloys is really not possible when you're getting into uh, low temperature alloys uh, where you're targeting a specific peak reflow temperature. So you need to develop a custom chemistry platform to uh, account for that resulting reflow temperature. And that this, this really addresses the challenge of, of, of leaving some of the post reflow volatiles, if you will, uh, from an LTS reflow or low temperature reflow on the board and creating electrochemical challenges. So if you design the chemistry specific to the resulting reflow profile that you're gonna use, you can then um, uh, uh, account for the, the proper exhaustion of the volatiles to enable higher electrochemical performance. Okay. Now I know that the, the OM565 is available in T4 and T5 powder types, right? So. What do you mean by that? And what design elements should determine the appropriate solder paste 
powder type that one uses. Yeah, so, so, uh, so great question. Um, so type four solder uh, powders typically have um, nominal sizes between 20 and 38 microns for the powder. A type five would be somewhere between 15 and 25 micron uh, uh, diameter powder sizes. The advantage obviously of a finer um, powder type, so a smaller powder type is that you can fill the apertures during the printing process and, and achieve higher target volumes, particularly on very small feature sizes. The disadvantage of a, moving to a finer powder type is that you have an increased surface area and thus you challenge the chemistry to work harder to effectively clean the surfaces and prepare it for soldering. So designing that chemistry for uh, different alloy, uh, different powder types is critical to, um, to being able to uh, achieve kind of the, the next generation needs of, of, of achieving higher volume on finer feature sizes. Interesting. This has been very interesting discussion, I got to say. So, but but one final question before I let you go here. Looking out, where do you foresee low temperature solders going from here? What what's coming? Yeah, uh, so I I think low temperature solders have the potential to be a, a significant technology enabler for next generation component design, next generation uh, um, uh, end device end device device designs. And, and I think as the low temperature solder solutions start to approach the reliability of that of SAC 305 while enabling reduced peak reflow temperatures, you, you'll start to see more applications being able to, um, to, to use these thinner form factor, higher die to package ratio components which ultimately enhances the performance of the end device. So the, the opportunity is certainly there for, for low temperature solders to, to kind of evolve the, the lead-free space of, of the uh, um, uh, solder alloying assembly world and, and enhance next generation designs. And I think the whole industry is kind of excited about, about what, what's possible from low temperature solutions. No, indeed they are. And uh, listen, our time is up here, but I want to thank you. This has been very informative. And, and for the people watching, I want to say, you know, you know, Paul clearly has demonstrated his knowledge in this area and done a great job. And so if anybody's interested that's listening to this um, and wants to reach out, please reach out to Paul directly. Usually I point people to LinkedIn and I know that you're active on there, yeah. um, but also through McDermott Alpha and, and your local representatives, you can get to them, no doubt. Um, Paul, thank you for your time. This has been fascinating, and hopefully we can get a catch up later in the year to see how things are developing. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. Absolutely. Thank you.